Hello, welcome to another live Google Hangout on the Living Income Guaranteed. And today we are going to be discussing, as we had also shared a few weeks ago, about the ongoing um, talks about experiments on basic income we've discussed on the Finnish uh, one. And today is the turn of the Netherlands, essentially the Dutch experiments with basic income. And we've read some articles here and there about it. And the information has been scattered. So we truly wanted to bring someone that is very informed of the subject, of course, and is a fervent advocate of a basic income in the Netherlands, Sheer Hoimakers. So thank you for being in the Hangout and welcome. Thanks for having me. Hi. So to all of our viewers, I'd like you to remind you that uh, there are questions and comments that you can place throughout the live transmission of this Hangout. It will last for about 40 minutes, so please make sure that you get your comments or questions throughout that time frame. And um, if you're watching on YouTube in the repetition, you can also place the question or comment, and we will make sure that Sheer can come and share his perspective through a comment. Uh, so to anyone that has already placed um, uh, the comments there, yes, we are here, it is live, so you can place uh, the comments as we go along. So to begin with, um, why don't you share a little bit more about yourself, uh, specifically because we are, you know, a group of international people interested in basic income, so maybe people in the Netherlands are quite well acquainted with you, but can you tell us about yourself and how you became to, to be this fervent supporter of a basic income? Yes, yeah, sure. Um, well, for me, I guess this all started about two years ago or one and a half year ago, uh, January 2014. Um, I was another flyer by the European Citizens Initiative on basic income that was going on at that point. And that was my first well, initial uh, contact with the basic income movement, so to say. Um, after that, I started studying more and started organizing all kinds of things and started seeing more perspectives. Uh, on this issue and, and it got even more interested and um, long story short at some point it became my full-time job to kind of share the knowledge I had and try to get these experiments going. Um, I have to note though that I, what I'm trying to do in this debate is, is kind of be the, bring the nuance in. So what I'm always saying is I'm not even really a supporter of basic income per se but I'm uh, in favor really of experimenting with this because this is there's such a high potential here. Um, nobody knows exactly what will happen with the basic income. I mean, we've never had a, a true basic income in society as of yet. So nobody can really say this is going to work or this is not going to work. But there's so much potential given the research that is there on similar topics that we definitely need to do something with this. So that's really my standpoint in this, seeing the different perspectives and trying to bring them together and bring out action. So tell us about um, why is it important to clarify that it is not a basic income per se that we're talking about, but it's an experiment that has some basic income elements in it, or how would you define it? Yes, indeed. These, these experiments, which are being held in, in municipalities in the Netherlands, or will be held, um, indeed take aspects of the basic income, and that's important to note, because these municipalities don't really have the power nor the finances to really have a full basic income experiment. Um, what they do basically is they look at our current social security system in the Netherlands, which is uh, on an international scale pretty, uh, pretty, uh, uh, yeah, pretty okay, pretty high standard you could say. Um, so we have some basic income guarantee measures, however they are uh, conditional for example. So you have to apply for a job when you're in them, otherwise you'll get uh, uh, less or you'll get nothing. Um, you have to apply for the, uh, the scheme, uh, there's all these extra conditions, sometimes you have to do something in return. Um, and there are poverty traps. So uh, when you start working in this social security scheme we have in the Netherlands, the first bit of paid work you do, you're actually not paid really because you have to hand it back into social security. Uh, so you first have to pay back your own allowance, say, uh, directly. Um, so what these municipalities want to experiment with, mostly inspired by the full idea of a basic income, is uh, uh, taking away these conditions and um, also taking away the poverty trap, so allowing people to earn money on top of their uh, uh, allowance. And that means that you're actually getting pretty close to a basic income, you could say, because then this allowance is something close to it. It's not individual, that's a difference still. So it's not that people get it individually, but it's more per household. Um, so that's a difference. And of course, you have to be already receiving this to be able to enter these experiments. 
So um, in that sense, it's not a full-fledged basic income experiment, but for the people who are in there, it will be pretty close to it. And so that makes it kind of, yeah, a more nuanced thing. And what has led the, the municipalities to start considering these kind of experiments at a governmental level? level because as you said we had seen the e uh, the ec uh, petition the european commission petition and um, it didn't get that far so what really happened whether in the dutch society or what really triggered that the government or municipalities would definitely say okay let's start um, planning these kind of experiments yeah i, I think there's a lot of this that came together here it's, it's really interesting to see all these different uh, uh first of all all these municipalities have different perspectives on this as well. So it comes from different political angles with different ideas behind it. Uh, some might be in it because of the, the automation, robotization kind of part. Some might be in it because of social security. I think that's the majority because social security is too, uh, uh, well, controlling right now and, and not really helping people. Um, and so there's different, uh, uh, some are really from the basic income kind of uh, uh, thought. Um, so there's different perspectives, that's first of all. But the, the series of events that led to this they are, uh, I think it started about two years ago with an article written by a Dutch journalist on this, uh, Rutge Brechman is his name, he also wrote a book on basic income the next year, uh, and that article was really a success story, it, it, uh, yeah, it started a lot, and then there was a Dutch television show which put attention to it, and then the discussion started moving and things started being organized, and yeah, it just uh, couldn't be stopped anymore, you could say, so um, then there was a politician, an album, and in Dutch municipality saying, I want to experiment with this. And suddenly this was a possibility. People started talking about this. Um, before you know it, there were, well, it was discussed in, uh, in, tens, uh, uh, yeah, in, in, in about 50 municipalities, there have been discussions on this. So it's, it's really uh, a big issue right now. So that's something that ourselves, being outside of the Netherlands, can learn from because we tend to uh, see, for example, personally, I've been looking at the Netherlands as the place where these potential experiments or basic income full-fledged pilot programs could take place so that we can learn from how people have steered the conversation, as you were saying, and so push forward so that people become aware not only of what basic income is, but also other changes that are required at a societal level. And it's, in essence, coming together to discuss it. And as I understand, you've been quite a link within like many organizations to push forward these uh, conversations. So can we get to the nitty gritty plans as to how and where these experiments will be implemented to begin with? Yeah, uh, yeah maybe something I should add, by the way, what I think is important, what's interesting about the Netherlands, and that's also the thing I try to bring into it, is that, um, What's special is that it's, it really comes from all sides. So from all sides of the political spectrum and uh, also from all places in society because, because of course this issue also, uh, uh, well, everyone can relate to it. It, it has some influence on everyone. So, um, and that, that's, I think, important. And so there's not just one forward, but discussion is ongoing. And there's certainly not a majority in the Netherlands who wants a basic income, but uh, because of this discussion, people said, wait, why don't we experiment? And then, this argument for experimentation could be pushed forward. So uh, it's all from kind of starting an interest in this, well, what some people call utopian idea of a basic income, and then taking that idea and making it concrete and more subtle and nuanced so that many people might join in. That's kind of, I think, how it went. And that's maybe an interesting thing for a process uh, as well. Um, but to the, to, the, indeed, to the details of the experiment, um, well, there's nothing sure yet, actually, when they will start and what exactly they will entail per municipality. Um, I'm quite sure that they will start. That's, that's actually quite sure right now. We have so much momentum and, and there's, uh, well, many municipalities joined in, so many people involved. This cannot be stopped. Uh, however, we're still kind of in a political process. Also, the municipalities are being, uh, uh, well, they are uh, kind of asking the, the national government whether this is possible. and. If the national government would, wouldn't uh, cooperate, then probably they will still do it. Uh, but um, this is kind of the process going on right now. Um, and we are hoping that next year they might start. So uh, well, if things go well, they might start, say, April, May, June next year. Um, but it's also very probable that they might start in January the next year, so 2017. 
uh, that might be an issue. Of course, we're very much pushing to, for them to start next year already. And that is, uh, uh, well, there is hope for that. But yeah, this is kind of a political and also uh, uh, yeah, process within the ministry, with the national government, which might take time because of all the laws involved and, uh, well, that uh, kind of inertia that's there. Um, yeah, that's, uh, so that's on how the time frame is. Um, what the experiments will entail then, it might be nice to know there's about 10 to 50 municipalities are, which are really serious. So uh, I expect they, those will at least develop plans and will really want to join. And, and there might be more in the future. Um, some plans are more, so to say, ambitious than others. Uh, so some are really only about the social security system and then removing conditions and removing poverty traps. But there are some municipalities who see this and say, hey, but maybe this is not enough. We really want to know more about what trust kind of and uh, 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 security does with people. And we will also focus on certain target groups. Uh, so for example, starting entrepreneurs who might not be part of the social security system right now because they, uh, well, they have insecure income, but they're not really below the threshold. So we're hoping also that these experiments will be put forward, but that may take a bit longer still. Um, yeah, so next year, I hope there will be about four or five municipalities starting with these kind of less ambitious but very important experiments. And then uh, probably, I hope the next year, or maybe also next year, uh, there will also be hopefully different experiments. And then there are even experimental, uh, what you were saying about full-fledged basic income experiments. There are plans for that, uh, not on a municipal level because that's not possible because they can't, uh, yeah, they don't have the finances for that and the, uh, uh, the tools because they would have to coordinate. But there are initiatives in, in uh, uh, kind of citizens' initiatives and uh, also political party initiatives that, that want to work this out. Um, whether that will work will probably depend also on the results of these early experiments. Absolutely, and it's in our best interest that they actually do, so that the conversation keeps rolling as to how to perfect it and how to manifest it for many more, not only municipalities, but countries altogether. So uh, you mentioned, um, about the welfare system and how it would um, benefit to it. So can you, for our viewers as well, clarify um, the differences between the minimal requirements welfare uh, system and the basic income? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So our welfare system, or well, we, we have quite a complex one, so it's hard to, to detail at all, but the most basic part of it, so when you don't uh, qualify for all the other things, not for unemployment insurance, because we also have that, but you have this basic scheme, uh, basic allowance, um, which is kind of translated into support in, in, in English, I think. It's called bystand. Well, this, uh, uh, this basic allowance, you, you, like I said, you qualify for it when you don't get uh, enough from the other ones, from other allowances or your job or whatever. Um, and it has a lot of conditions attached to it. So first of all, you have to apply for it. And then you have to wait for a bit, in, in, for a period in which you have to try to get a job for yourself. Um, then there is extra conditions on that you always have to take a job when you get presented one, if, if it's at least a bit applicable to you. Uh, you have to apply for a job so many times a week. You have to uh, come to kind of these reintegration courses. Uh, uh, you have to, uh, well, basically declare everything you do, even if you do volunteer work, which is not allowed sometimes. You only can do volunteer work sometimes when uh, it's really uh, helping you towards a new job, paid job um that sometimes so there's all these conditions and it's, it's a long list and it actually has grown this year with a new law being enacted um so this is basically a counter <laughs> thing going on uh yeah that, that that's this secure this system then um like i said this system also has a poverty trap so when you are in it um you only get it as an extra fee so that you have enough to live from so um in principle it's enough to live from it's about nine for a single household, single person household. It's about 900 euros uh, per month. But then, yeah, so some, when you start working, for example, if you have a part time job, say you have a part time job for, for a minimum wage, then um, then you actually won't earn any extra money from that job with respect to when you would just have the allowance, because as soon as you, for example, start earning 700 euros a, a month, then you're always, you're, you won't get that 700 euros as an allowance anymore. Um, 
which may sound logical, but then also it's not really stimulating and really, yeah, uh, uh, on a financial level for people. Um, so this, these are two differences from the basic income. Uh, a third difference is that, uh, yeah, kind of like I, uh, um, like I said before, it's not individual. So uh, if you're living in a household which has enough income, then you won't get it. And uh, the fourth difference, so we had conditions, poverty trap, this uh, 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 individual or not an individual. And the fourth difference is that, um, well, this is, it might seem like you're still far off a basic income when you don't have conditions, uh, poverty trap, and uh, uh, um, this individual part, uh, because you're still only giving it to a part of the, uh, of the citizens because when they are below a certain income threshold. But in effect, when you analyze this more thoroughly, you'll see that on financial terms, uh, we're really close to a basic income at that point. Because if everyone's basic income is guaranteed, if your income is guaranteed to a certain level, without the poverty trap, um, then you have a negative income tax, as it is called. And then basically the only thing you still have to do if you want to go to a basic income is pay out this basic income to everyone instead of only giving it when you're below a certain threshold. And although this is a quite complex kind of uh, 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 abstract matter, you can do this in a financially um, neutral way. So this doesn't have to cost any extra money then. So that's so. So basically, those are the four differences you could say between our current system and a basic income. Okay, so you were touching there on how it could be financed, funded, and that's the question that everyone has. So, in terms of these experiments, what is uh, the plan in relation to how it will be funded? How or does each municipality have a different plan? Do they have a unified plan for it? What's the situation? Yeah. So. Um, this is different per municipality, I think, and actually it hasn't been fully determined yet in many municipalities because they are still working on this political thing, right? So um, there are many options. Uh, probably those going on in the uh, basis of security system will use the budget that, that's there for that. So um, these people already receive benefits, uh, only now they will receive them unconditionally, which might actually, if you would implement this, save money, right, in a direct sense, because you don't have to check up on them all the time anymore. And, uh, well, so that's 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 one way to finance it. Um, still, you might require some extra funds. So you have some innovation budgets, sometimes on a municipality level, sometimes on a provincial level, sometimes on a national level, and there might also be private funds who are interested, or maybe European funds. So um, yeah, most we're still kind of exploring these options, uh, and it will depend per municipality per experiment what's the best choice. Uh, but at least I know there are already private funds which, which might be interested and um, yeah there is also when you search well and when you have the right people right you you will find uh, yeah whether what like you said in Netherlands, where there's a will there's a way <laughs> so when you, when you when you search you'll find something in the sense if there's yeah if there's a one absolutely that's something that we tend to see in many people's criticism toward it um, how it will be funded and looking more at the ways that it cannot happen instead of saying, well, if we decide it, why don't we unite and make the laws and the policies um, be suitable for making it happen? So um, in relation to this, um, I also came across uh, also on your Twitter feed, this basis income in um, 2018.nl website, which I understand is a citizen's initiative. Um, as I understand it, they have to reach over 40,000 people that endorse it in order to, for example, propose a basic income. But there's also the, um, let's say, the limitation that there cannot be anything as endorsed as a, a proposal that is causing any form of reform on taxation. So how does the basic income or this proposal fit in there? You are very right. This is a kind of a complex thing. Um, well, what I think this this citizens initiative does. Um, well, in the Netherlands, we don't have direct democracy, right? We just have parliamentary representation, like in most countries in the world. Uh, only Switzerland, for example, has a direct democracy, right? With the uh, uh, citizens initiative there being let being uh, uh, well, it will be a referendum, like a real real question to the people in that sense. But in the Netherlands, this will just mean that it will be put on the agenda of the parliament. So um, 
in that sense, you are right. Uh, it cannot relate to taxation directly. You could, of course, interpret this differently, saying, "Well, that is not. This is not about taxation. This is about social security or something, uh, about health, whatever." So, so in a sense, um, we could maybe get around this. And even if 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 we can't and it won't be accepted, that it would still generate, of course, a lot of attention again for this. And if there is forty thousand autographs. Um, it has no legal power, this initiative, in that sense, only that it will be put on the agenda. So whether it will be officially put there or via kind of the media when they, when they reach the 40,000, that of course doesn't, uh, yeah, it's not, it's not a major issue. That's, that's the good news, I guess. Um, so this is yet another. We have met many different perspectives in the Netherlands. The experiments are one. This citizen initiative is a recent new one. Uh, we also have the, the uh, crowdfunding initiatives, um, like in Germany. Uh, you have Mein Grundeinkommen in Germany, and uh, we have Ons Basisinkommen, which is basically, yeah, the, the same idea. So there's many different people working on this from different angles, and that, that keeps the momentum going. And that, uh, I think, the, yeah, the right approach. Yeah, I consider that from a media perspective, it does bring the discussion to the forefront. And in relation to this, um, what are the expected uh, this effects um, from it, from these experiments? Meaning, in the media, you have to portray it uh, with these expected results so that people can actually get into the conversation or support it. So can you share a bit more on, on that aspect? Yeah, so this is, um, this is a very important aspect, especially with these kind of experiments because uh, with relation to basic income. Because when you look at basic income, you might expect uh, um, Results effects on a very broad level, right? So throughout uh, uh, society, or kind of on a maybe on a level of what people, how people behave, but definitely also on a well-being level, on a health level, um, and maybe even on a social level in, in how uh, uh, communities are formed. So these things you, you want to measure as broadly as possible, and you'll have all these hypotheses on all these levels. Um, so basically, this is also the, uh, the idea of many municipalities to, to measure this broadly. And some will uh, probably uh, put the emphasis on different parts of this. Some will look more at this kind of what will it do to people uh, 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 on their well-being. Uh, some will look more at health. Some will look more on participation, as we call it. Um, so yeah, I think it's, it's very important to, yeah, to make sure that we measure as broadly as possible, and that's also one of the things I'm working on. So we're setting up uh, research coordination at the moment, trying to get together all the universities that are involved, and then making sure that we can actually also compare these experiments and measure as broadly as possible. Yes, because that can also be the way that either the experiments will create a result that can also be promoted as successful or not, because. Yeah also how to measure this kind of results on social participation or uh, volunteering etc i mean i guess that we will see more of that in the as it unfolds and as it develops but it is certainly in our best interest i would say that as human beings as part of the global uh, community to see this work so i hope you can also keep us updated on that and i mean the question that everyone has as well is has there been any amount of money uh, proposed already? Is there um, some rate that has been looked at in terms of the money given? Um, well, yeah, because we're starting from a social security benefit, it's kind of, um, yeah, it kind of starts there. So at our current uh, uh, level of social security. So that's why I was talking about this kind of 900 euros. Um, it's hard to say, though, exactly what this means internationally, because we have a, a lot of different kind of yeah benefits uh, also involved when you have a low income. So, um, for example, you might get an extra allowance also to pay your rent or for your so for your uh, uh, um, healthcare. And part of healthcare is also funded by government. So it's hard to compare the exact amount on the international level. It might be uh, about 1,500 euros if you count everything, or, or less, depending on your healthcare system and the like. Uh, so, in principle, this should be enough to live from. And uh, that's uh, when you look at research being done in this in the Netherlands, uh, there's not that much that I could find, but there has been some. And, uh, and it says that these levels for most people are just enough, but there are some situations in which they might be a bit too, le uh, too little to less. So there are also uh, people advocating for a bit higher. 
levels, and these experiments will include this probably because, um, uh, yeah, that's that's part of, for example, in Utrecht, the experiment that's most well known internationally because of this article in the Independent. Uh, there, they are really thinking about having at least a, a bit higher uh, income uh, because that will allow them to also experiment with different framings. That that's a very specific part of their experiment. So, uh, yeah, that, that's a novel story, but. At least they will experiment also with a bit, a bit higher uh, uh, income. And what would you propose? Because now you've described what others are proposing, but you now becoming an expert on the subject, what would you see as you know, a desirable amount? And also if you could share like the proposed road that you would see to, for example, see a basic income pilot full-fledged, uh, either coming from these experiments or as a plan in itself. Yeah. So, so what I what I really try to do is, and that's kind of my role, and is like is, is, is really well, not staying neutral. Definitely not. I mean, I'm I'm really promoting, uh, 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 well, yeah, bring out knowledge and trying to get people into action, but not saying uh, I know what it should be. So, um, what I what I hope for, and that's what I'm really advocating for, is that we get a variety of experiments, uh, as big a variety as possible, with as big a sample, you say, as, as possible. So that we really can, yeah, investigate all aspects of this and, and, and go as far as possible with that. And then I, I don't know what the results will be, depending on those results. Um, yeah, my opinion might change as well. Uh, I think, though, that there are some dangers on the way, indeed. So, for example, with regard to this, uh, uh, with the level of the uh, income guarantee, if this is too low, then you're actually not testing the right thing. You're not testing security. You're testing still insecurity. So. These kinds of things need to be dealt with. Um, same with, for example, the length of the experiment. So if it's uh, only a short length, then people won't really feel secure because they know that it will stop after a year or two. So this is also something uh, yeah, we need to pay attention to. So there are these kind of details in the experiment that I really try also in uh, a collaboration with, uh, with the scientists involved to really look at, yeah, make sure we have experiments that ask the right questions and have the right conditions to really teach us something. Um, that that's mostly my role. So, to what it will lead exactly, I don't know. It depends on the yeah, depends on the results. But for now, um, I hope indeed that we will we'll get to a full fledged experiment because I uh, I'm sure that will show us even more uh, in the end because now we're only testing part of it. Um, so that definitely. But whether we will end up with a true basic income in the end, I don't know. That that depends. It might also be a negative income tax or it might be uh, something in between what we have now and that. Um, at least for now, we really need to get into this and, and yeah, make step forward. Yeah, all of those points that you brought up are really important to make the right questions, to make the right tests, to get the right results or the ways to get the actual results. Otherwise, it can be really um, a bit tricky to get any sort of actual answer as to whether it works or it doesn't. So I hope that they do the right way and glad that you're there also giving their your advice to them. So we have a question from Sylvie Jacobs and she's saying, what do you think about the poverty threshold of 900 to 1,000 euro and the disappearing of the allowances? Does that leave people on or below the poverty line with a basic income? Yeah, so this this is this kind of ties in with uh, yeah. I I don't know what the right level will be, and I, I I'm not in the position I think to really judge on that, um, because yeah, I I don't well I live with a basic income right now, but that's of course a very personal thing, and I don't know whether families do have enough income. Uh, so I yeah I, I just base myself on, on on yeah this kind of small bit of research done on this, and then I hope that it will be enough. Um, the poverty line, uh, of course, is is. Well, in a sense, it's important, but it's also, of course, a, a random thing in a sense, because, yeah, we just choose it at some point and we say, this is poverty, this is not poverty. And, um, of course, I'd rather see nobody in poverty. So, uh, but that, for me, that means the practical side of it. So I, I wouldn't like to see people being, well, unhappy because of their poverty, being insecure, being unhealthy, etc. cetera. So um, also on this account, I would just, yeah, hope that we, by looking at practical results and by looking uh, by doing experiments also at different levels, that will find out, uh, yeah, that at least people will have enough to live from and can live a happy, fulfilling life uh, uh, without this insecurity that we have now. 
Yes, because for example, what we also propose is that um, it doesn't only stay at the minimal or really basic. We call it precisely uh, a living income because we would like to see, as we were mentioning before, people having that certainty that you have a bit more than just the bare minimum to go by. And I would also agree that in order to get any form of real results, any pilot would have to have like an extended amount of time uh, running in order for people to really, at a psychological level, get out of that poverty mentality that you were mentioning. And that's essentially what I see is most important with this kind of pilot projects. And I really hope that these experiments have that into consideration. Otherwise, the real change that we expect to see within ourselves, not so much in the amount of money, but the psychological, the letting go of the stress um, of feeling poor, in essence, can be eradicated. Um, so we have other questions. Thanks, Sylvie. Um, she's asking a second one, and she's saying, some basic income models include the abolishing of minimum wages. What is your perspective or opinion about this? Yeah, this, this is interesting. This gets interesting because, um, because this idea comes from so many different perspectives. Uh, the system that you build around it, will, of course, will be very different when you're from a different political background. So mostly I try to avoid kind of judging on this because this will depend on your personal background and it might actually divide people if you say it has to be this or it has to be that. Um, of course, I have a personal opinion about this, uh, but that's very personal indeed. And um, it's also still, still nuanced because I don't know what's best here as well. But I think that this is a, a, a serious consideration. It's, it's um, uh, one, one uh, opportunity this might give when you have a good basic income, it needs to be a living wage or a living income indeed at that point, because uh, otherwise you'll still have yeah this feeling of insecurity and feeling of being poor. I totally agree on that. But if you have that, then you might seriously consider indeed uh, uh, yeah abolishing the, the minimum wage, uh, because then uh, that will allow you to make less of a distinction between paid work and uh, well, volunteer work. Then people might there might be a lot more paid jobs available as well, which also give people satisfaction and kind of a, 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 a fulfillment in their lives, uh, namely the jobs that are now between minimum wage and, uh, uh, yeah, uh, just volunteer work, so zero income. So I think definitely this is an option. That, and that this is, I think, a very interesting thing because classically uh, speaking, of course, it's a very kind of conservative right idea, abolishing the minimum wage or lowering it. But I think in this perspective, this is where kind of the right wing and left wing come together as well, because um, you will still guarantee a, living, a good enough income for everyone, and you won't have to deal with this kind of, well, market distortion, as they would call it on the right wing, uh, which comes through minimum wage. So it might be a win-win here, and that's, that's why I'm, yeah, I'm also excited about this option. Okay, we have other questions, so let's go through them. Do you, do you foresee a need for a basic income to go hand in hand with, say, rent controls as well to stop landlords hiking rents, knowing that tenants now have more money? Could it have a local inflationary effect? This is from Francis Potter. Yeah, good question. I, I think this, uh, well, this depends very much on what kind of a basic income you are uh, uh, talking about, because, um, well, in a, in a basic sense, of course, basic income is only about really guaranteeing this basic income. So, um, it doesn't necessarily have to uh, uh, give a huge redistribution of, of, of money. Um, in the Netherlands, luckily, most people live, well, at least near the poverty threshold or above it. And um, so if you would have a basic income here, and depending on the way you do it, of course, people who are in poverty right now would not be in poverty anymore, uh, depending on definition, of course, again. Uh, but it doesn't mean that everyone well, gets the same income or that there will be huge differences. So then the inflationary effect should be, uh, well, shouldn't be that high uh, because just like now, there will be people having lower incomes and having higher incomes. Uh, but of course, if you would have a basic income that would, well, certainly really lift everyone a lot up, then of course, yeah, you could have an inflationary effect. Uh, although I think it's more realistic that we'd have a basic income that, uh, will redistribute something and will at least people alleviate people from poverty, but that uh, uh, doesn't mean that everyone, for example, suddenly has more than 3,000 euros a month, because that's, that's not even, uh, well, that's more than the average, but that won't, that won't work at the moment. Uh, so, so yeah, uh, this depends also on your, your system. Um, on a more redistributive, you could say left-wing system, this might be an issue, 
But if, if it's more like right now or more right wing and with less uh, 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 huge differences, then yeah, then it might uh, not be a, a problem if you call it that. Yes, also from our perspective, it should be possible that, for example, an inflation can be regulated by the government to actually make things work. Uh, we tend to see this as a very rigid system, but in fact, we create it and um, there's nothing physical, uh, like in physical law written on it. So we, we could make it work, of course. That's my perspective. And um, we have another one from uh, Roderick Rodenburg, and he's uh, asking, does the basic income project in Manitoba already prove that a UBI will work um, like many other regions in the world? Or should it be implemented on a national level? I'm not sure if he's listening or maybe he froze. Um, but in the meantime, if you have any other questions, we can still get them through. We'll see if she can hear or if I Okay, yeah. can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, I'm back. I think my internet okay. connection uh, timed out. Okay, yeah, um, I see the question. Let me see. The basic income project in Manitoba, uh, the Mincom project. Yes, well, um, this does show something, I think. And it, it, what it shows, and there's many things to be said about it, but what it shows definitely is that there might that there is something here. Um, mm -hmm. Like you see in that project, not everyone will stop working, like some people would, would, uh, would expect or... Uh, Pessimistically, you could say. Uh, so um, it wouldn't prove, I think, that the UBI would work because that indeed you would also need to implement it on a national level. And the Manitoba project wasn't really a full basic income, it was more like a negative income tax. So, um, plus, it was, of course, in a different cultural environment. So, there's all these small buts and bits uh, to it, but still, it doesn't make uh, uh, it less interesting. and, and signaling that indeed there might be something here so um yeah when i kind of summarize the research that's been done right now i often do it like this i say um no we don't know whether a, whether a universal basic income will work we don't know for sure but given all the research there is right now um well there's 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 hope there's a, there's a lot of hope actually there's no reason to be pessimistic so um we should definitely not think uh, that it's improbable <laughs> say it like that so uh, yeah, that, I think that's 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 a way to summarize the research. No, I think no, you cannot conclude that there is that it's improbable it will work. So this is a very nuanced way to say. Um, or in other ways, you could say there's a yeah good uh, possibility probability that it will work. And if it works, well yeah, I guess we all know that might be quite uh, amazing. Thank you for your question, Roderick. And I would also like to ask you about your crowdfunded basic income. You're currently living off it, if I'm correct. Yes, that's right. And how's yeah. it going? Well, really good. Yeah, it's, it's quite amazing. I still sometimes can get my head around it that I'm really free in a sense. So um, yeah, it has allowed me, and, and it's not it's, it's not all easy. I mean, it's not like I'm, I'm, I'm uh, yeah, walking around happily all day long. It's, it's a challenge as well to kind of have this a uh, personal responsibility fully and, and not, uh, um, yeah, really just turning your life in this, this way and, and not, not having these, these rigid structures. Um, so, but generally, I'm, yeah, extremely happy with it and it's been a, yeah, major kind of transformation in my life. Um, it allows me to, yeah, to really focus on doing impactful things, which again make me happier, which again give me more motivation. And this is just kind of a positive feedback loop, which, uh, well, it's getting better and better, I could say. So, uh, so yeah, I, that, this might also be for me personally a reason to kind of think, hey, why would this only work for me? Why wouldn't it work for other people, right? So, uh, yeah, let's try it out. I would say that that's also a, an aspect of you sharing this kind of feedback for many more people to see how it changes you, your life, and to realize that, okay, crowdfunding works for someone, but what if we could crowdfund through the many ways that we could do it at a governmental level or some alternative initiatives and really change our lives, which I see that it is ultimately the point of any of these experiments beyond politics and beyond uh, the complications that any sort of governmental experiment can create. So I really thank you for your, um, 
I would say your joy <laughs> in relation to this uh, subject and really pushing forward to make it happen. Well, um, would, yeah. I, I, I think my internet died out again, so I missed part of the story. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, no. I was simply like thanking you for being part of the initiative and uh, having that impetus and that joy to share about this uh, subject and to, you know, let people know how can your life change if you have you have a basic income and this kind of uh, support unconditionally. Can you share with us what projects you're working on or that our viewers can, if they want to? You know, get in contact with you, learn more of uh, how they can join in the conversation. Yeah, sure, yeah. What I'm personally doing, well, the, the, the problem is, I, and this has been amazing as well, many people have been offering me kind of to help, right? Uh, all the time, and sometimes in kind, some in time, and that, that, yeah, it's been amazing. The, the problem with my personal work that is really, yeah, uh, I can't I try to share as much of it as I can, but I can't share much because it's, really about having an overview of everything that's going on. So you can't miss out on certain things. So currently I'm really working on this coordination and on setting up meetings again, advising uh, municipalities. Um, yeah, so when people want to get involved in this, um, I think what you could always do, and there's always something to do that's important to note. So um, you can always, well, just talk about it to people, right? That, that's one thing. Just, just talk about it to you, uh, with people you know, um, if you want to go a step further, organize a meeting or set something up. Um, if you want to go even one step further, yeah, bring it to your political party. Try to get people interested in an experiment. And um, yeah, if you want to get one step further, well, you can just start also uh, advising and, and trying to uh, help experiments. Be I think we lost him again, so let's see if he um, comes back. Uh, we will be closing the Hangout soon, so if there is any last question, you can place it through. Otherwise, we will finish it out soon. Um, so let's see. OK. Yeah. Yeah, there, <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is very frustrating. I actually heard you saying, I think we lost him again, but then I, then I lost you again. <laughs> That's okay. So, any last words? Um, it, yeah, so Roderick is saying thanks for the hangout answers, notes, etc. Thank you for watching as well. So, last words for the hangout um, on how people can join in, they can create um, their own meetings. What else? Yes, yeah, so there's also a basic income association. So, the basic income association, uh, which also organizes a lot of things. Um, you can get into kind of teams, local teams as well. So just, uh, yeah, Google it and, and you'll find the websites. Um, so there's many things that can be done. And that's, I think, the, yeah, one of the most important things I learned in this past year, in the past one and a half year, is just start talking to people, start doing things. And before you know it, uh, yeah, you'll be in a place that uh, uh, you'll discover things about yourself. And um, in fact, I can, yeah, what I've experienced is that this, doing something like this, doing something that, seems good is so satisfying and so amazing definitely when you're working together with people so i could definitely recommend to anyone start doing things start talking about it and um, good luck i absolutely agree on that because even with these hangouts what we try to do is to get the conversation going see the alternatives and get people interested on these not only basic income per se but on many other changes that are required in our society to essentially make of our world a better place to live in and what a better way to be part of the conversation to initiate it and to be motivated day by day to to do it so uh, to people that are asking for the website i will place it in the information section of this video so you will find it there uh, also um, on um, shears uh, twitter and so forth so I thank you very much for your time and for sharing your candor on this topic. And I really wish and, and hope that these experiments will genuinely show the benefits that we are all expecting, uh, providing this kind of support for people will bring. So thank you very much. Thank you, Marlon. Really nice meeting you. So, Likewise. Thank you. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye, and thanks to you, the viewer, as well. We will see you next time with another Hangout. Until next time.